enrichment pro program that they started was in Tennessee. Oh. Uh, and it was very secret, really secret. The Manhattan Project? Yeah. Super secret. Uh, probably nobody who was really working on it understood everything there was that they were working on. You know, it was kind of one of those things where nobody knew everything, so nobody, and everybody knew they were not supposed to talk about it, so. Uh, it was, but it, it was a big project. Uh, and at the time it cost, cost a billion something dollars to develop processes and, and enrich uranium and figure out how to, how to shoot you have to reach critical mass. When you reach critical mass, it means that there's enough material there that when the deteriorating uranium shoots off a, <clears throat> a proton, mm -hmm. it can't miss something. That's when you reach critical mass. Uh, so what it, when it hits something, then it splits it apart, splits an atom apart, because of the velocity of it traveling. And those two parts take off, and because it's critical mass, one of them's gonna hit something else, and so on and so forth. Uh, it was a relatively inefficient bomb with all of the, I can't remember how many pounds of uranium it was, Uranium is very heavy. A little cubic inch of it weighs a lot. You know, like <clears throat> that would be a couple of cubic inches worth of material, nothing. That would probably weigh a pound, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what they use is depleted uranium for, uh, for armor piercing shells now because it's heavier than steel and will go right through it like a butt piece of butter, you know, a knife through butter. Uh, so it's, it was really heavy, so a couple of pounds of this stuff wasn't necessarily too big, but you had to shoot this stuff together. Well, in the first bomb, Little Boy and, and Fat Boy both, Flat, Fat Boy was a pluton, plutonium bomb. Uh, it wasn't a uranium bomb, Little Boy was a uranium bomb. And they knew the uranium bomb was going to work, they didn't know if the plutonium bomb would work. But uh, <coughs> they <coughs> they have a gun here and a, a gun here, and when the atmospheric pressure indicated that it was the right elevation from Earth, and there was a radar on it there sending signals back, when all this indicated that it was, see it didn't explode when it hit the ground, it exploded above the city, so that it, whoa, Oh. went out like that. Oh. Hmm. Uh, so this was designed to explode up in the air above the city so it would just spread out and destroy it. Well, it did that. Uh, not in Nagasaki. Well, it did in Nagasaki, but, but they missed the target. Uh, but in Hiroshima, it worked perfect. <coughs> and when it hit, when it went off, it was... Uh, uh, a few hundred feet above the city and it just you know just spread out over the city just blew it away but they fired shoot these two masses of uranium together and they fuse they, they shoot them so fast they just fuse together into one big piece of uranium and that makes critical mass and then the atomic reaction starts happening it takes just that much time. Uh, and it releases, <coughs> according to Einstein's theory, equals mc squared, a mass times the speed of light, which is 196,000 uh, or 186,000 miles per second. That's a lot of energy for a little one gram of mass. And the amount of the amount of material that made the Hiroshima bomb that blew the city away and everything 
was about the size of a penny. The rest of it was wasted because when that size of a penny was gone, critical mass no longer was met. And it had blown the other material apart. Mm -hmm. But it got that much and that made, made that much of a bomb. So it took a good chunk of the green. <clears throat> but that was the Manhattan Project that developed all of that technology okay. and how to make the bomb. Now the problem was is they had no way they had no way to deliver the bomb. They had nothing that would pack a bomb that big and get it over Japan. They had nothing. And so they had to develop the B-29 to do it. That's one of the main reasons they built the B-29 was to be able to deliver the atomic bomb. Mm -hmm. uh, they never used the B-29 in Europe, ever. Mm. But they did drop incendiaries, they did use B-29s over, over Japan before they dropped the atomic bomb with it, but they took it to Wendover and that's where they jerry-rigged two planes in, to, to be able to load and carry these bombs and they had to figure out how to get the bombs on, on the planes because they were too big to, to, to scoot under the plane and load them. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they dug pits and mills were out there. And so everything. that's what's out in Wendover? Yep. That, and that's what was, is that what was going on out there? That's what was going on out there. They were figuring okay. out how to, how to, uh, how to deliver the atomic bomb. And that's what that, that was the importance of the base out there. And they did it. They learned how to load them. They learned how to fly the airplane and drop the bomb and, and turn and get away from the explosion uh, in time. Mm hmm with the explosion, if you're, you know, you turned the wrong way and went back over the target or something, uh, would have wiped the airplane right out of the sky. Yeah. And as it was, they took a pretty good jolt as it was. But, you know, they flew as high as they could so that it'd get the bomb all the time it needed to drop as far as it could while they were getting out of the country. Out, yeah. Did you just say there was a certain number of planes? There were, yeah. Did you say there were seven, five, two? No, two planes. Two. There were only two bombs. Okay. They only had two bombs. Nobody knew that there weren't more bombs, but there were no more bombs. Okay. There was little little boy and fat man. And those those were the only two bombs left. The third bomb they blew up in in, uh, in New Mexico to see if it would work. And they only built three bombs. How many planes went over there? Because you tell me that, that about Three. that photographer that the camera didn't yeah. work and uh -huh. Three planes. There was a there was a a chase plane, a photography plane, oh, which okay. was a B twenty nine, and two B twenty nines. One was boxcar and one was the Enola Gay. Mm -hmm. And the Enola Gay carried the first atomic bomb, and boxcar carried the second one. Okay. And uh, on the second one they lost the target. It wasn't going to be Nagasaki, it was another city, and they couldn't find it because it was cloudy, so they had an alternate uh, uh, city, which was Nagasaki. Mm -hmm. This is just a freak accident of a cloud as to why one city was just wiped off the face of the earth and not another, but uh, they missed the city. They, they dropped the bomb in the wrong place and it was off to the side a little bit. But the problem was, was Nagasaki was in a bowl, mm -hmm. and the bomb was on the edge of the bowl, but it just oh. just ricocheted in the bowl and just devastated the city anyway. Oh. But they missed it. Yeah. Uh, it could have been much worse. I don't know how much worse than total annihilation you can get. But yeah. So in, in Wendover, you were explaining that plane to me. You are explaining to me that those guys that were going to come together, yeah, this project. Yeah, a reunion in Rapid City this August. And what? And the guys are, and you said there's a certain number of guys? Yeah, there aren't many left. Okay. They're dying off. Yeah. Uh, Colonel Tibbetts, the guy who headed the 509th bomb group, the, the only guy who knew that there was an atomic bomb involved, even in the people flying the airplanes, they didn't know what this bomb was. They just thought it was a great big bomb. Mm-hmm. 
they didn't understand it wasn't just a big bomb, it was a really big explosion. Mm -hmm. uh, and they didn't know, have any idea that it was that big. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised, that's why the camera didn't work, is the guy was probably just awed and went, whoa, probably forgot to turn it on. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, wow. But uh, they dropped, they had 150 dummies that they, dummy bombs, the same size, the same weight and everything that they would load and take out on the test range out there and drop by uh, just east of Wendover, a secret range out there. And then they would fly the planes back and they would hide them so nobody could see them from the air, mm -hmm. nobody could see them up on the hills. So if there were spies up there camping out in the mountains, they couldn't see mm -hmm. the airplanes or what was going on. Uh, and I'm sure there were patrols patrolling the mountains all the time yeah. down there in the desert. But it's it was pretty it's a pretty interesting place. It's got a lot of history to it. You see, she didn't she hadn't heard about it, and so I was. She was going to go online. I said, well, you need to get online. I said, because I know that it's something you would be very, very intrigued with. Yeah. She, uh, 